Hello and welcome to our webinar, Abacus Updates for 2021. I'm Michelle Anderson, Marketing Director here at Vice 3 d I just have a couple of housekeeping items before we start. If you do have any questions, please ask them in the question box and we'll get to as many of them as possible. We will also be sending out a recording of this webinar shortly after the presentation. I would now like to introduce our speaker. Raghavendra is an FEA consultant here at Vias 3 d He has a Master of Technology in Mechanical Engineering and has 15 years of industrial experience in engineering consulting, customer support, and technical sales in the area of finite element analysis, based design, and validation. And with that, I'll hand it over to Raghavendra. Thank you, uh, Michelle, and uh, very good, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, thank you for uh, taking out time from your busy schedule and attending our uh, webinar, um, ABACUS 2021 Technical Update. So uh, here is the agenda of the webinar. It will be about 40, 45 minutes, uh, approximately. So firstly, I will take you over to a brief uh, company overview, and then we'll move to Abacus 2021 update and the various topics, including the non-linear mechanics uh, and enhancement in contact, and then Abacus explicit, and uh, finally, we'll uh, take a deep dive in whatever en enhancement we have in 2000 version in Abacus CAE. So why is uh, 3D? Uh, is an engineering company. It started in 2016, um, and we uh, we started in US. Our headquarters is in the US, and at this point of time, we are spread uh, in various countries like in Canada, Mexico, and India. Um, uh, we typically provide uh, engineering consulting and automation, customization training, and PLM uh, PLM implementation services. Uh, we have uh, over this year we have the multi uh, industry experience from in automotive uh, domain aerospace and defense domain energy uh, process and uh, utilities uh, industrial equipments marine offshores life science and high tech um, we have very strong uh, team um, at was 3d we have about uh, 50 plus employee uh, mainly they are either PhD or masters in design manufacturing uh, structural mechanics, wood mechanics, electromagnetic, etc. And uh, we are the system platinum partners and we provide the software solution. Uh, we uh, are the reseller for the um, system uh, products and that includes uh, various brands like Katia, Simulia, Dalmia, Inovia, etc. So over this year um, in Aquarius 3D, we have very strong competency in terms of um, uh, injury consulting. And we have very, uh, unlike any other uh, resellers, uh, we have a uh, very strong uh, engineering consulting capability that includes in uh, fine element analysis, CFD, electromagnetics, et cetera. So this webinar is typically um, focused on the Simulia brand. And um, here I'm just showing uh, some of the capability that we have uh, in-house, uh, like uh, design analysis and validation using simulations, FE-based fracture uh, mechanics, optimization, multi-physics capability, and fatigue analysis, rotor dynamics, uh, vibration analysis, multi-body dynamics, and composite uh, analysis. So these are, I mean, these are um, some of the partial list of our valued customer uh, from uh, software solution side and the training side and um, and the um, engineering side. So let's uh, move to the, uh, uh, the enhancement part of uh, this webinar. Um, as a part of the continuous improvement um, in, in Avacus for the solar and the GUI, every year we have the release, and um, this year we have a very, uh, very strong release in terms of the capability enhancement and the robustness. Uh, we have uh, many, many enhancements, but um, uh, I have listed out some of the major uh, uh, capability enhancement, uh, and if you want to uh, look at all, uh, all the enhancement, then um, it is listed in um, the release note in our documentation, Abacus 2021 documentation. So let's move to uh, nonlinear mechanics updates. So in uh, 2021 Abacus release, we have um, included a couple 
temperature displacement uh, for x at the end. So now temperature degree of freedom is, uh, is available for performing uh, crack propagation analysis in a vacuum uh, standard. So you have um, now a couple of temperature displacement element uh, for XFEM analysis. And you can um, basically account for the heat transfer due to thermal conductance, gradients, and the heat generation across the crack surface. If you look at this, uh, the image on the left hand side, so this is the element. And if you're modeling with the XFEM, the crack may actually generate anywhere in the element. So the image on the right hand side, if you see here, the crack has been generated and there are the crack surfaces. So these uh, heat transfer can uh, basically count it across these crack surfaces. So that's actually one of the very uh, important and um, very strong uh, capability that the uh, customer wanted for a long time. So now we have a new material parameter for star beam general selection. So what you see here uh, on the left hand side is uh, the keyword that we have in our previous releases. So you start being a general section and in a data line, you basically provide the property for the material and so on. But what we have really done is um, now we have a new parameter called the material in star B general section and uh, which will be referring star materials. You really don't need to define the material property for each and every uh, star uh, beam general section. So that is uh, defined separately here, and this material can be referred um, in uh, multiple uh, keywords that is referred to star beam general sections. Uh, this is a quick example, uh, the verification uh, example for uh, these uh, new uh, material parameters. So what you see is with material parameters and without material parameters. So it ex ex produces exactly the same thing, uh, it's just for verification purpose. And if you're working on this beam section, so we have the good news that we have um, included two, uh, uh, two sections uh, for thin wall uh, cross section in, uh, in uh, beam general section. Uh, that is uh, the uh, channel section that you see on the left hand side and the head section. Um, so here in the keyword, what we have is uh, start beam general section and then the parameter section equal to channel or section equal to the head. So these are um, available in the standard library for uh, beam general section uh, from 2021 onward. Um, in many cases, um, the cross section of the beam are complicated, specifically if it is composite, um, uh, like in the wind, the wind blades or the rotors. So those are typically made of the multiple material, as you can see here. If there are multiple materials, so those are the composite cross sections. So these kind of uh, cross section is difficult to model with the predefined um, library beam sections uh, because uh, it is very complex and there are multiple material in it. So in this case, the mesh uh, cross section is uh, very very important and handy to model this kind of scenario. And uh, so this general beam section cross pro uh, cross section property. Uh, approximate uh, for the subsequent use in the beam analysis. And it uses uh, star beam section generate functionality. So in fact, um, Abacus already supports a family of 1D wrapping element like wrap uh, 2D3, the wrap 2D4, uh, but then there is a challenge in these elements. Uh, these elements fail to capture the effect of in-plane wrapping which can play an important role in a structural response of composite beam structure. So now in this version, we have a new family of uh, three-dimensional wrapping element that has been introduced in 2021 for mass composite beam cross-section. Here, what you can see here, we have the new family of elements, wrap uh, 2D3, and we have the uh, wrap F2D4, and so on. So these elements capture the effect of in-plane and out-of-plane wrapping uh, on the stiffness property of composite beam element uh, with this cross-section. So here um, we have some new uh, damage initiation criteria for uh, fraction and failure analysis. So we have um, LARC uh, 05 damage initiation criteria. 
and is a specific level very useful for uh, reinforced uh, composites like uh, polymer matrix and the fiber reinforced composite. Uh, in fact, um, this was available previously um, in the form of user subroutine, but uh, in 2021 version onward, it is uh, available as an integrated functionality in, in, in a backup standard. So here's the keyword that we have, start damage initiation, criteria is a LARP05. And for this damage uh, initiation criteria, uh, you can have uh, multiple output variables for the matrix cracking, the fiber cracking, and uh, the, the fiber splitting, fiber tension, etc. And these uh, functionality uh, support for the 3D solid element, plane stress, shell, solid shell, and the membrane elements. And the good part of uh, it is that it, it also uh, support for XFDM for crack propagation analysis. So this is a, uh, one small single example to demonstrate uh, this uh, the damage initiation criteria in the rectangle piece um, with the different angles. So this is uh, with XFDM a crack propagation analysis showing the crack at zero degree, and the 45 degree, and the 90 degree. And with, with, um, there was a request from the, uh, the users to, to have um, the unknown damage initiation criteria that is uh, phosphor coulomb criteria, we call it the HC. So um, that is also implemented um, here. So here is the keyword, the damage initiation criteria HC and then the parameter values that you need to define. So you can in fact output the this damage uh, criteria output at CCRT and it can be used in combination with um, existing uh, damage evolution option that is already available uh, with the solver. And uh, this criteria can be used in conjunction with various uh, plasticity model like Mises, Jones, Cook, uh, Hills, Dr. Packer. And it can also be specified together with other initiation criteria and each initiation criteria is treated uh, independently and uh, this functionality is available um, in both Abacus Standard as well as Abacus Exposite. So here is a quick verification that in the example here, we have the specimen and it has been loaded in actually. And what you can see is the test data um, and the simulation data from the literature and that has been implemented and simulated here. What we show here is the damage initiation criteria and the evolution criteria. And on the top side here, what um, that is shown is the comparison between the simulation result uh, from the backup standard and explicit uh, that shows very good correlation and exactly even the same uh, result. Uh, as you may be aware that uh, Abacus uh, standard has um, a linear um, uh, analysis capability. Uh, we have the various uh, procedures that's already available like uh, linear static analysis, eigenvalue extraction, steady state dynamic analysis, transient model analysis. So the various uh, linear dynamic analysis procedures already there, but what we have done in this particular release is we have uh, the result of the performance enhancement um, in 2021 version of Abacus. So the performance of element output in linear analysis procedure is substantially improved. And we have improved this parallel scaling of element output in, in this uh, perturbation analysis, specifically when we have uh, multiple load cases, uh, 50 and hundreds of the load cases. In those, those scenarios, we have a very good, uh, good uh, performance enhancement. So it has enabled the parallel scaling of element output in eagle eigenvalue extraction analysis. So here, what we have shown is a performance statistics. Uh, so uh, we have I mean, a simple problem, our uh, square plate with 4 million dd of uh, uh, 4 million S4 element that, that is uh, equal to 24 million degree of freedom. So this huge model has been run with uh, these different scenario and the performance statistics are shown here. So this blue, blue line uh, shows the total uh, world clock time and the gray one uh, shows the output analysis phase. Uh, in the previous version. And on the right hand side, what you see here, and this is in our current uh, releases, 
And you can easily see that there's a tremendous improvement in terms of the performance. And uh, here, uh, this is for the 100 load cases. And on the right hand side image, what you see is uh, the performance for uh, 100 Egan modes extraction analysis. Uh, this is uh, for the previous releases and what we have, I mean, what you can see in the latest one is much uh, better performance um, uh, has been achieved. Um, uh, what we have uh, is the cyclic symmetry constraint. Um, in fact, uh, this is um, a very, very useful constraint when we have the huge model and which shows this uh, cyclic symmetricity, uh, like what we see here. And uh, specifically, when it's difficult to maintain this uh, the same uh, mesh across the border. And um, this was actually available in a back standard before. But in this version, we have extended this uh, functionality in uh, this explicit. Of course, the, the keyword uh, remains same and um, uh, this uh, CAE navigation uh, remains same. So it's a star cyclic uh, symmetric model. And in Nebraska CAE, you can go to the interaction and create cyclic symmetric and so on. And this, I mean, uh, I mean, we have been using uh, the terminology master and slave uh, in Abacus for a long, long time, probably since the beginning. And um, recently, what we have been realizing that uh, there are uh, there, there's a less acceptability in terms of this terminology. So we are moving to the new terminology for master and slave. So there have been a company-wide initiative to move to the new terminology. So what we are moving uh, uh, is from master, we, uh, we are naming as a main, and the slave we are, uh, we are moving to the new uh, terminology called the secondary. So it's now uh, main and the secondary. Uh, so um, th th this is more acceptable terminology, that's how we are moving towards. Uh, however, uh, at present uh, it's still being used, but um, that's where we are moving towards. And, and have been changed and um, we advise the new users to get um, acquainted with this terminology as, as moving forward. And here um, what we have uh, is a contact enhancement. There are uh, a great number of enhancement as far as the contact is concerned. I have listed on a few major kind of one that, that, um, that are there. So in, in the latest release of Abacus, uh, we have improved uh, contact resolution for the foam. So this is applicable whenever you have the foam and it's being compressed. So in such situation, what happens is the foam shows um, you know, very, very, very soft at the beginning, but as it starts you know, uh, compressing, it, it shows so much steeper uh, behavior. So what do you see on the right-hand side uh, is typical behavior that foam has. So what we have done is so we have made this nonlinear contact stiffening by default. Whenever we have the foam, the low density foam and hyperfoam material comes into contact. So this nonlinear contact stiffening has been default for this particular scenario. Uh, what you see is uh, we have this foam and there's a contact and it's compressed. And so there's a particular simple example to demonstrate what, what happens. So this is some, I mean, some of the severe cases to demonstrate this particular uh, phenomena. And so what you see is the contact constraints uh, um, are, are not uh, so even. Uh, in, in this case, in the previous version, um, that has been changed and improved in uh, the latest releases. And what you see is much more uh, better uh, enforcement of the contact constraint. Uh, leading to uh, better convergence uh, behavior and better um, uh, result. So here, um, apart from this, um, you can also use the penalty stiffness scale factor. Um, you can vary with that one. You can increase uh, uh, to further reduce the penetrations, but it has a tendency to reduce the time increment size. So we, uh, you need to be careful about this behavior. And uh, here what we have is uh, H2H contact performance. 
uh, here uh, in many counties, especially in, in, in acts per se, uh, uh, this is very, very important to account for this ash in, in, in the contact. So um, recently in 2018, uh, we have introduced dynamic uh, feature edge criteria. Uh, so, <clears throat> and that was uh, much, much faster compared to the old edge static feature edge criteria. To explain this one, let's say you have the rectangle piece and um, as the def deformation goes on, these particular rectangle piece may, you know, uh, develop this fold and, 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 and there's a patch. So by default, in the current uh, default behavior, this edge are not detected um, and it can basically, you see the penetration something like that, but in, in a recent enhancement, uh, what we, with this evolving feature edge, so these edges are detected and it's accounted in the contact uh, calculation and you see much more realistic behavior from a default. Um, so, however, including this, uh, including this uh, dynamic edges uh, gives you know 50 percent more uh, extra runtime uh, compared to the compared to the all edges. So, as we are moving towards uh, more um, improvement, so now here is how these new uh, features or the setting is um, uh, using. So this example, this performance is for um, uh, Vensor car crash simulations uh, for uh, 29 million degree of model. So this runtime, what you see is about, you know, um, 75 uh, minutes, and that is for parameter edge only. So th th this, it has a 286,000 contact uh, edges. But if you go for the um, evolving contact uh, edges in the older version, so there are about 40 million edges because the new edges need to be detected as um, it is folding, it is deforming to, to account for those contact constraints. But the problem here is as you account for the more edges, the runtime also increases drastically. I mean, compared to the, this parameter edge only, there's 55% more. And in a recent version, our target, our objective was to basically reduce this time, the same time accounting for the new edges. So what you see is uh, it has improved from a previous uh, version, at the same time accounting for the new uh, uh, dynamic edges. And uh, so we have not reached to the target. I mean, this ground that you see, and then um, as we keep improving, uh, so we, we, we have the target to reach and further improve this performance uh, in incoming releases. So uh, let's move to um, the enhancement that we have in the current version in 2021 Abacus, um, in Abacus Explicit. So what we have, uh, the new thing is the automatic um, element status output. So the status output is there, I mean, uh, since a long time, but what we have done is uh, this field output uh, is now automatically requested and added um, as an output for material and the element uh, which has a figure mechanism um, and th that is the default for uh, Abacus Explosive wherever you have the material with progressive damage to shear failure, the tensile failure, force failure, etc. and in Abacus standard there is a default when you have the fiber reinforced material, load cycle fatigue analysis, and the corrosive elements. So in the, these uh, use cases, the status uh, variable has become default. And uh, you may recall that status uh, variable is uh, typically used to remove this failed element. To give this quick example, I mean, uh, what, what does it mean is uh, a quick, uh, simple example of uh, the crushing this tube. Uh, from the top side and uh, in, in the previous version if you have not requested a status output and if you are post-processing a backus viewer so this is how it may look uh, because if there's no status output requested and this may look funny sometimes however numerically is perfectly fine but there's no status uh, variable output and that you can remove this one so what we have done in a uh, current release is uh, these variables are automatically requested and are used uh, while post-processing 
that gives neat and clean uh, uh, experience while post processing these results. Uh, we have um, here uh, the history output uh, and for the element volumes and, and uh, integration volume. In the current releases, uh, these are now available as a history output in um, explicit. So integration uh, volume is limited to the continuum solid element at this point of time, uh, but element volume variable is valid for all an event. And uh, these variables uh, as a history output uh, can be helpful as a diagnostic for tracking excessive uh, distorted element or element which shows the huge drop in BD. So you can uh, plot uh, these variable, um, something like this, what, you, what I have shown here in this images. And if there is any you know, coin or sudden drop, that, that can indicate there's something fishy happening uh, to those elements. And, um, and uh, one can go and debug those things that may be causing the issue. So we have um, we have on demand uh, output in uh, in Abacus uh, explicit. So normally, what happens is uh, uh, you get the uh, field output uh, only at the requesting point. But in uh, the previous version, let's say if you wanted to have uh, the result where in uh, certain um, the criteria is meeting. So that was not possible. So we have changed this one. So now what you can do is you can specify the trigger criteria for capturing the analysis output. At that moment, uh, the criteria is first met. For example, you can have the damage initiation. So you can uh, now in this current release, you can get the feed output exactly at the point where uh, these uh, damage initiation criteria or any other criteria are exactly met. So this criteria, this triggering criteria, can be based on the filter or unfiltered element or null output. And when a trigger uh, condition is met, all the field output groups are written out. And the trigger criteria is defined by associating such a filter with an output group containing exactly one output variable. So what you can see here in this um, keyword options, star filter. So extra output frame equal to us. This is how this parameter you need to use. And this filter um, is defined here in a star output, comma field, comma filter. You give the name here and you give this variable that you want to um, request for. And in explicit, we had uh, in, 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 in a, a recent, uh, a few recent releases, we have set an enhancement for uh, CP10 element, a quality 10 element, and what we have uh, extended and improved in this version is the distortion control, and that was implemented in, in this release to prevent um, this element from flattening out from inverting or distorting excessively. So here the constraint uh, that, that controls this distortion are enforced uh, by using the penalty approach in the traditional penalty approach that have been used to suppress this distortion. And here is a keyword option, star section control, comma distortion control equal to yes, that we have to set. And for these elements, uh, instead of uh, distortion length ratio, what we are using is the current volume over the original volume at each integration point for tracking this distortion and uh, this value is uh, by default 0.1 however you can set this value from 0 to 1 and, and it, it has shown this good improvement in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, conversions as well so here is this quick uh, verification of uh, distortion control for quality tab element in explicit. So this um, block is being uh, compressed. And uh, this is uh, what distortion control and it ran to completion as you can see here. But in the previous, I mean, without distortion control, um, it has not run to the completions uh, because of the distortion it's just giving so the numerical issues and things can be terminated. 
And, and apart from this uh, distortion control, um, what we have uh, is the enhanced DT calculation for these three, three, 10 element, the quadratic 10 element. Um, so uh, we had this implemented uh, functionality like a star dynamic comma explicit, improved DT method equal to no. So when you have this no, so this element DT uh, method provides the lower bound for the element stable time increment estimation. Uh, which is so very critical for element stability. So now we have the more improved aggressive uh, DD calculation. And here's a keyword option, start dynamic comma explicit, comma improved DD method, yes, which we have made it default. And then in previous releases, the DD calculation was overly conservative for highly distorted element, uh, which causes problem with the mass scaling. Um, if you have a smaller DT, then there would be more uh, mass added that, that, that sometimes creates problem and uh, those are not uh, wanted in many, many cases and it has been uh, improved a lot here. Uh, in terms of the performance, um, there's something um, based on the previous development uh, that we have uh, uh, released in, in this uh, version is called the hybrid uh, message palette HMP in, in explicit. So it combines uh, multi, multi, uh, multi point interface, the DMP, and the thread in SMP uh, based parallelization. So it's a combination of these uh, parallelization methods. So it uses thread based parallelization within the compute node and the socket and uh, MPI to communicate between these nodes. Uh, specifically in Exposit, when you're working with a uh, huge model, so normally you will be working in the nodes, there are multiple nodes, and each node has ways, compute sockets. So in this scenario, what we have done is, this thread helps each other with the computational work and the work sharing, and that reduces uh, the load imbalance. To just understand this one, now here is a two nodes. So this is first node on left hand side, and this is a second node. So each node has a 16 core here. And if you're running on a 32 core, uh, the explicit, so this explicit, um, so we'll be running on each and every core here. And there would be, I mean, uh, the data sharing between these uh, red boxes, uh, between each red boxes. Um, now, due to this um, recent enhancement and a development from the hardware side, we have a shared memory uh, in the compute node. So instead of you know uh, each and every I mean, uh, isolated uh, um, the memory, what we have done is uh, these memory are shared within a within a node, and that uh, that does that, and then the, the communication between these nodes are with uh, with the MPI within this node is a threat, and it had it results basically in much more better performance. Typically, you know, you can see uh, a 10 to 40 percent uh, performance uh, improvement have been seen in various models, and that's how it has been um, implemented. Um, about this uh, CPU, you use the number of cores and the threat per MPI process. You, you specify the number within which you want to distribute them. And, and uh, one, uh, one, 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 um, another improvement in terms of the performance uh, is seen for the large model. Uh, what we, you can see here, there are uh, n number of the complete vehicle and its dynamic analysis, uh, large deformations, and high distortion. So uh, each car here, what you see, um, has 9.4.9 million degree uh, million elements. So that um, comes to about 28.6 uh, million degree of freedom. It's a huge model, and uh, there are multiple such uh, wavelengths you can see here. So what we have uh, done here is there are a number of cars, like we tested for eight cars, 12 such cars, 14 such cars. And then we check this performance for eight cars in a way a different number of CPUs like 280, 560, and 1120. And uh, we recorded this whole clock time. 
And what you see is the relative uh, performance enhancement, where you can see uh, 10% and 15%. So this is what uh, enhancement in the performance you get in uh, about 2021. And, and we hope that uh, it will be very useful, um, specifically for people working in exposit um, uh, in, in a crash analysis scenario. And uh, what we have um, now is the, the new functionality and keyword support that we have in Abacus CA in the 2021 version. Um, we have added keyword support for gap conductance, radiance, and uh, convection in Abacus CA. In the added uh, material dialogues, what you, what you see is the gap conductance and the gap radiance. And then and, and, uh, under the core fluid, what you see is the gap convection as well. And we have another um, uh, functionality support in Abaca C that is analytical feed for uh, applied thickness if you're working on the composite uh, area. So that will be uh, very much useful for you. Uh, previously, this analytical field uh, could be specified for overall ply thickness. Uh, but if, if, if it was the individual ply thickness could only be specified by fixed value or discrete field. So now in this version, we have added support for analytical field that you can have your own distribution pattern for each and every ply uh, in the composite. So here what you see in uh, added composite layer, we have the Ply names, you have the region selected, the material, and that's where you have the thickness that you can use the analytical field uh, for, for your thickness distribution for each and every ply. Sorry. So, this added support for analytical field for individual ply thickness, uh, it leads to I mean, the performance of a composite layer editor. Also, when you're working with large number of files, uh, um, it has been uh, drastically improved. Uh, there is a small, I mean, uh, minor enhancement uh, in terms of uh, usability in a backup CA, but it's very, very useful. Uh, if you remember uh, the section manager in a backup CA, we used to have two columns, the name and the type. Uh, what we have added is a third column that is a material. So it was really difficult to figure out the section which material it is referring. But now it's here, you, you can see directly which material uh, that particular section is referring. So it will show you the material. If it's one material, it will show one material. But if you have multiple material associated with this section, it will show you multiple material. As you can see in the second line here, uh, typically uh, in, in case of the composites, if the material is not applicable, other none will be shown here. And um, we have uh, contact property assignment uh, by material. So if you remember, in, in um, especially in um, general contact, uh, in a general contact, if you had to assign the contact property uh, surface um, by surface, then what? was a procedure that you had to create the individual surfaces and come to these dialog box, select these surfaces and select uh, uh, the uh, contact property. Uh, but we have a new, uh, a new um, way of uh, assigning this thing. So you will find by material as well. So for example, here you have the surface uh, defined by uh, Material, so you say material.aluminium, material.titanium, so you can directly select the surface groups and you don't need to actually select and create those material one by one for those material. And that is very, very useful uh, when you want to define this interaction by material. And uh, this is also uh, supported for the contact property, surface thickness surface options assignment and uh, surface uh, feature edge criteria assignment. If you look at this input file, so with the same keyword like start contact property assignment, but if you look at this, the data line, you will see 
like you know material name and another material name you get uh, on a property and then you have to say material uh, to mention that these are by material Raghavendra, I just wanted to let you know we are at 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah thank you for reminding. Yeah, and um, so in, in some of the most support that we have in um, Abaca CA is uh, for uh, smoothing and the vertex criteria, especially if you're working with the general contact. So you will see the new option here, the surface beam smoothing assignment and the vertex uh, sub criteria. So specifically you're working in and in configuring uh, the vertexes for the contact. And um, this is also supported by the material, meaning um, you can say um, uh, vertex by material and you can configure those things uh, for your contact definition. We have added this uh, general contact, um, small sliding for general contact, and uh, the uh, support is in Abaca CA. What you see here is a general contact, is an um, added interruption dialog box. Here, what you see is a sliding formulation, and that, uh, that's where you can uh, change it to the small sliding in America CD, which is uh, not supported in 2021 version. We have surface property assignment uh, for the crush trigger, specifically useful for the composite. We're working in the composite, and the friction, you will find the two uh, different values here. Uh, there's one for friction, others for the cross trigger, and, and there is also uh, once again uh, by material, so it can be configured uh, by material, specific material that you have in your model. Um, uh, there, there have been many, uh, many, many requests to have uh, OTB reducer as a, as a plugin. So in this version, we have implemented uh, the functionality through the plugin wherein you can reduce the size uh, or configure or customize the new ODB based on your original ODB. So what happens is you have your original ODB may be very, very large, and you would like to have the smaller ODB wherein the selected the frame or the step or the field output are there, and that can be saved as a new ODB file. So here what you see is, uh, uh, this plugin, uh, ODB reducer or builder. So um, you can select the step, you can select the, um, you know, the frame, you can select the, which variable you want, and you can configure these things, and uh, you can generate the ODB file uh, based on your requirement that reduces the, um, the space uh, drastically. And, and uh, we hope this would be very, very useful for a Microsoft TA user. And uh, with this one, um, I would like to conclude uh, my presentation for uh, enhancement uh, in the Microsoft 2021 version is uh, readily available for uh, the download. And we encourage um, all the users to download it as uh, the uh, accuracies and functionalities are, the functionalities are there, the capabilities has been improved. And um, we hope to have the better experience with this new version. So we are open to the question and answer if you have any. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. We do have a few questions. One is, uh, when will the recording of the session be available? should be sent to you within 24 hours. Um, we do have a couple of other questions. One is, can I trigger and stop analysis in a denting analysis? In the denting analysis of the door outer hood, the nonlinear analysis converges better if it, it is done as in force displacement instead of force. But then an anal analyst does not know what displacement needs to be applied for a particular force. Currently, we do it manually. Yeah, so what um, yeah, the, the, in the new slide implementation that uh, we have uh done is for certain criteria uh, like damage uh, initiation criteria so that you can define those things um yeah so um we, we can get this particular uh, thing uh, uh you know especially for this damage initiation criteria and fracture mechanics uh, uh, scenario great thank you We've got another question. 
the ODV reducer is done before analysis or can it be done after analysis? Uh, no, I mean, um, so ODV reducer's functionality comes into picture when you have already done uh, your analysis. Um, but before analysis, you know, you can actually customize your uh, variable that you want the output. So in that way, you you can easily control your uh, ODB. But this functionality is uh, after once you have done your analysis, the ODB is ready, and you want to have you know reduce uh, information in the new ODB file. Okay, thank you. Looks like we've got another question. Is LARC05 available in explicit? Um, I think that this, this is uh, in a standard, so I need to check and I can come back. So I think it is, this, uh, to my understanding, uh, it is in uh, back standard at this point in time. But I, I need to check and come back to you on this. Okay, great. We will send that follow up then. Um, we've got another question for the master and slave. What happens if I run old input an old input file having master and slave parameters? Okay, so um, in this case, what really happens is uh, uh, it will convert this um, the old uh, parameter uh, into the new terminology, and it will give you the warning message uh, about this conversion. And, and, and it will carry forward with this new terminology. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is about coupled temperature displacement elements. Does the newly created surface participate in the heat transfer? Oh yeah, so this is um, our new functionality that we have added. Um, it, 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 now you can do fully coupled thermomechanical analysis. Uh, uh, with uh, axe FPM for crack propagation, so new surfaces are generated. As you, as the crack is growing, and there are new surfaces that can also participate in the heat transfer analysis, so heat can dissipate from those new surfaces. Thank you. And a hybrid message parallel. How much performance improvement can be expected? Um, that actually uh, depends on um, the model that you have and typically what we see is uh, from 10 to 40 percent performance improvement can, can be seen but that is subjected to the model uh, that you are running. Okay, um, that looks like all the questions we had so I would like to take this opportunity to thank Raghavendra, and thank all of our audience. We will be sending this out. And if you have any other um, follow-up questions, you can respond to the email with the recording in it, and I will make sure that Raghavendra gets your questions. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, every moment, for your time. Um, thank you once again. Thank you. Have a good afternoon.